In a recent series of videos I repaired this PM300 power analyzer. In fact all I did was calibrate it. It was coming up with a calibration error when it was powered up. Just needed calibrating. But what I did was completely strip it down. I um, cleaned up the fan. It was making a horrendous noise. Cleaned up the entire instrument, reassembled it, recalibrated it again and now it's working fine. So what I have set up here is the PM100 is being monitored by the PM300 and the PM300 is being monitored by the PM100. So they're just uh, monitoring each other. I move the camera so you can see the displays a bit more clearly. Hopefully you can see the displays. They're not particularly clear on these instruments. It's just the nature of this type of display. But the PM300 is drawing around 21 watts and the PM100 is drawing about 10.3 watts. Now these two units have identical power supplies. The only thing that's different is the PM300 has the additional board for the extra two channels. It's got a larger display, uh, so a bigger backlight and hence it draws more power. But what effect is that having on the power factor for the power supply? As I say, it's identical power supply in the, in the two. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll look at power factor. So this is the power factor for the PM300, of course. And um, it's 0 0.908, which is not too bad. It's not brilliant, but it's quite uh, satisfactory for a, a machine of this type. And if we look at the power factor for the PM100, which is, of course, being displayed uh, on the PM300, uh, what we're getting is 0 0.837, which is nowhere near as good. So although they've got identical power supplies, as you can see, just by changing the load on it, it does make a tremendous difference. Um, but the real question that I'm sure you're all dying to know is what happens if you plug a PM300 into its own backside. Can we monitor the PM300 using the PM300? So let's try it. I'll reconfigure this. We'll plug the PM300 into its own rear end and see what happens. So this is the configuration I now have. The PM300 is monitoring itself. So we'll get it powered up and um, see if it can successfully read its own power use. Okay, and as you can see, it's working fine. We're drawing 21.65 watts. And um, if we now switch to power factor, we'll see if it's reading the same as we were seeing on the PM100, which was just over 0 0.9, 0 0.907. So that's uh, absolutely fine. So yes, we can indeed use the PM300 to monitor itself. What we can now do, of course, is also plug in the PM100 and have them both monitored by the PM300. So I'll do that and uh, we'll see what results we get. I now have both the PM300 and the PM100 being monitored by the 300. The PM300 is on channel 1, the PM100 is on channel 2. So I'll power it up and we'll see what results we get. Okay, I'll move the camera closer to the PM300 display so you can see it more clearly. And so, as you see, the results are very comparable to what we were getting before. 21, just over 21 watts on channel 1, which is the PM300, and around 10.3 watts on channel 2, which is again what we were seeing before. The PM100 is, of course, powered up. And if we now go to power factor, again, we're seeing very comparable results to what we were getting before. So uh, you can see the PM300 is truly uh, isolated in terms of its electrical measurement characteristics and uh, it can even monitor its own power usage. So this is um, the sort of thing I'll be doing with um, this instrument. I'm going to start comparing different types of equipment, see how good their design is um, for example, testing Agilent bench multimeters against the Juntek and Siglance and that sort of thing. Um, but um, hopefully it answered a question that you're all 
uh, dying to know is uh, what happens if you plug a PM300 into itself and uh, now you know.